What's going on everyone? Justin again as always. Thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. Cheers to those of you that have your beers. I hope you enjoyed your Monday for what it's worth. Alright, so for today's topic we're going to be talking about improving your skills when it comes to your inspection, when it comes to mastering that upsell, when it comes to appropriately testing certain things or inspecting certain things uh, instead of just throwing uh, flushes and throwing filters at something that you never looked at. So let's dive into it a little bit more in detail. At my work we have something called a DVI. I'll put the picture down here in the corner so you guys can see it. Now this program is developed through NAPA uh, which involves basically an inspection form. Anything from a road test to having it under hood to under car to checking brakes to checking tire tread depth also involves us setting tire pressure checking the battery. Here's a little down and dirty test that you can do with one of these uh, uh, basically state of health testers that you can pick up. Like I picked up that OEM one from AutoZone for like 40 bucks. This is an old one. My boss has had this one for a little while. Next clip down, you're probably going to want to test uh, at least the radiator cap. You might not have to pressure test the entire cooling system. Let's face it, you're doing an oil change. You're kind of pressed for time, but you're not so pressed for time that you can't test the radiator cap. So here is an adapter that you can use with your coolant pressure tester. And uh, not too incredibly difficult to do. Go to pump it up. If it doesn't hold air, you know it's not holding pressure. Pressure's going to shoot out. Recommend a radiator cap. That's going to help them in the long run because of that boiling point. Okay? If you can't seal the system, it might lose coolant over time. Over time, the car might actually overheat. Moving back to the inspection form though, so you're going to want to check tires, obviously, tire pressure is a big one. Um, I know that not every single spare tire is easy to get to and not every single vehicle has a spare tire. Some of them have come with like uh, air compressors if they come with anything at all. So let's not dive too much into the spare tire, but regular tires, it's always good to check the pressure. In fact, it's a law here in California that you set the tire pressure to the manufacturer uh, specified uh, PSI rating from the B pillar. You're also going to want to check for any kind of leaks. Um, you know, earlier on in my career, I was told to recommend struts uh, that appeared to be original equipment when the vehicle has over 50k on it. I'm not saying that you still can't do that because it's always a good idea to, um, you know, replace something that's of age so that, that way your car continues to run good. But I'm still of the mentality, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So if you don't see any leaks and you don't have a lot of clunking or uh, or any kind of a jouncing complaint, I mean, I really wouldn't worry about it. You're going to notice that when you're on the road test. The road test is very important, okay? Simply, uh, even going around the block will tell you a lot about the car. Does it pull to the right? Does it pull to the left? Does it make any kind of weird noises? Do you hear any kind of rattles? Are you hearing any kind of uh, exhaust leak when you're going down a tunneled area where you can kind of hear better? it's going to tell you a lot. You know, does it pull, does it drift, does it wander, like all different types of stuff. So it's always a good idea to go for a road test. And then you can make those notes when you come back. Hey, well, went for a road test, heard some grinding uh, from the front brakes, or had a lot of vibration while accelerating, seen to smooth out as I started to apply the brakes. You know, stuff like that. Next thing, so lug nuts. Let's talk about this real quick. So if you're removing wheels to check your brakes, you're going to want to make sure that you torque the lug nuts down. Now, I'm not talking about gunning them on with three lug luggers or whatever. A lot of guys do that. I'm not talking about using the torque limiting stick because, again, that is just for limiting the amount of torque applied to that lug nut so you're not um, shearing a wheel stud or messing up that um, lug nut. Actually torque it. So once you zip it on, then you go ahead and lower the vehicle down, use a torque wrench, torque it to the manufacturer's specification. It's just going to save you in the long run. Uh, moving on over to the air filter. So I've heard this whole flashlight trick where you shine a flashlight through it. If you can see through the other side, it's good. I don't buy into that, okay? If I flip the air filter over and it's covered with junk and whatnot, I also don't buy into spraying it out and then reusing it because you're spraying those microfiber uh, pieces of material that's built into that filter and now you're creating bigger holes or you have a potential of creating bigger holes which will then allow more debris to come in and possibly get into your intake and wear the engine out over time. If it looks dirty, recommend it, okay? If it doesn't look dirty or it looks like it's got a little bit of grease on it from somebody else pulling it out to inspect it, recommend next service. 
The Cummins Diesel, by far, some of the most disgusting air filters you're ever gonna pull. For whatever reason, just all just tarred black on the bottom of them. Don't know why. <laughs> all right, diving on in. So when it comes to leaks, okay, these leaks can be pretty tricky to find. So you're not always gonna be able to do a uh, quick inspection and say, definitely oil pan, definitely valve cover, uh, definitely camshaft position sensor or something like that, or definitely water pump. Some of these things you just can't simply pinpoint because there might be too many. You know, you might be looking at the underneath side of a pan where it looks like the pan's leaking. Looks like it could be puking out of the rear main, which it could be both. Looks like it could be puking out from the front crank. And then all the while, on some weird spot of the corner top part of the engine, you see oil also running down from the valve cover. So in this situation, you could recommend a pressure wash. Now, I know that other videos have been done where they have recommended not to pressure wash your car because you're getting water all over these uh, circuits and sensitive computers and this, that, and the other. I gotta tell you, I've been pressure washing underneath the hood of cars for many years now, okay? One of the first jobs I had starting out in the uh, automotive industry was I was a car salesman, then moved over to a lot attendant, then moved over to a detailer all within about a 12 month period. And then I stayed a car detailer for approximately six to 12 months before I deployed. And as a car detailer, we would pressure wash under the hoods of these engines all the time and use uh, armor all to clean up the, some of the plastics to make it all look shiny and pretty, right? You know, so you're not gonna hurt nothing by giving it a good pressure wash. And if you need to pressure wash it to find a leak, recommend pressure washing. Now, how do I feel about leak detect detection dyes? Uh, you know what? I've heard good things, I've heard bad things. You could put a dye into the uh, crankcase. Now, they do have different dyes. They got one for coolant, they've got one for refrigerant, uh, for like the pack oil. They have one for oil base. So, if you need to put it in the power steering or the engine oil, they have one for that. You can go to O'Reilly's and talk to your parts department and ask them which one's uh, most appropriate for your situation. But yes, adding dye to the system after doing a fresh oil change to try to pinpoint a leak. That might help you, but again, if it's leaking from multiple areas and you didn't clean it off, it's gonna be a little bit tricky to spot. So I'd recommend at least pressure washing it off, and if you're at home trying to do it, and it seems like it might be even a minor leak, hit it with some brake cleaner, clean it up. All right, let's move back over to the inspection form. So we talked about the cooling system, we talked about testing for steering and suspension issues, we talked about the brakes and tires and setting tire pressure, we talked about testing the cooling system. So putting the cooling system under pressure is gonna tell you a lot, especially if you're coolant leak, whether it's gonna come from the water pump or a hose, but other things that would be handy in this inspection process would be a mirror. So get yourself a little inspection mirror because if you can't see quite underneath and you're not sure uh, if it's a possible cracked housing or a thermostat leaking, or if it's just the underside of that upper hose, get yourself a little inspection mirror. Should be able to give you a, a better idea of what's going on there. Tightening things up. This will be the last thing we're gonna to touch base when it comes to the inspection thing. I think we've kind of covered most of it. If I miss anything, you feel free to put it down in the comments. But when you're tightening things up, okay, whether it's a radiator cap, because some of the Ford products got the ones to spin on because they're threaded, and then same thing with Volkswagen and some of the other uh, European manufacturers. But then also, when it comes to oil drain plugs, do not over tighten and crank the living heck out of them. Snug them up go a tidbit more, okay? Snug them up, tidbit more. If the flat washer appears to have been causing some kind of leak before you crack it loose to drain the oil, replace the washer, okay? Cheap fix, probably a couple cents on top of the oil change, or maybe they even incorporate it into the oil change because that's part of the process. But change the washer out, okay? Save yourself the hassle. When it comes to the radiator threaded cap styles, Make sure you're actually lined up. We just had a customer come in the other day. He had no idea why his radiator cap wasn't threading on. Took a look at it and sure as heck, either he or somebody that he knew was trying to thread it on, they threaded it on or tried to thread it on at an angle, popped off. Now he couldn't get the cap back on. Tried to, I tried to clean it up with a file, hoping to try to save him for a short period of time till his uh, new reservoir came in so we could change it out for him. But unfortunately, it was unsuccessful. The file method just did not clean it up enough. So just be aware of what's going on as you're trying to tighten something down. Don't overkill it. 
And then last but not least, always double check and verify your fluid levels even after you get done doing the road test just to make sure everything's on the up and up. I say this about engine oil. I know you can start it, fire it up, let it run for a few seconds, turn it off. Wait a few seconds, pull the dipstick and check it. It's not like that with every vehicle. We had talked about the diesel three liter and how you'd have to wait approximately 10 to 15 minutes before you start it or you'll blow the bottom crank out. And that's after you pour the oil in. So you gotta wait a little bit of time. During that time frame, you could be doing this inspection sheet or DVI process. But always double check your fluid level before you deliver it to the customer. I myself had that situation actually happen to me today. Uh, we're double checked the not only checked, but double checked the cooling system coolant. And then my boss went for another road test a little bit longer, came back, and the reservoir was empty, but the radiator was good. So I had to top off that reservoir. So it's a good idea to double check. Even if you already double checked it, just take another peek at some of the other things. That's all I got for this video, guys. Look, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's content. Uh, I'm still playing with the DeWalt once I get a few more situations and various uses out of it. See if I can't do a side-by-side -side comparison and I'll try to figure out some kind of a uh, little scientific test that we can put the two against. That's all I got. We'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Deuces.